This module aims at discussing characteristics and boundaries of firms. After learning this module, you will be able to understand the classification of market structure, positioning, vertical boundaries and horizontal boundaries, the firm characteristics through product and brand positioning. The theory of the firm consists of a number of economic theories that describe the nature, existence, behavior and structure of the firm along with its relationship with the market. In order to understand the theories of firms, it is important to know the classification of market structure with respect to firm characteristics and boundaries. The behavior of the firm with regard to fixation of level of output and price depends upon the market structure in which it operates. Therefore, in this module, we shall discuss classification of market structure with respect to firm characteristics and boundaries. The market models discussed in this module implicitly assume behavior of owner managed companies only. Classification of market structure. We know that all firms will maximize profit at the output level where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. However, firms operate in a large variety of market structure. Market forces such as demand and supply in these different market structures influence the behavior of firms in different ways. Economists have categorized firms behavior that led to the study of four types of market structure. These are perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly. The market firms such as monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly are clubbed under imperfect competition since they differ from perfectly competitive market with respect to their respective degree of imperfection. Monopolistic competition and oligopoly are true extremes of imperfect competition, the former being the least and the latter being the most imperfect competition. Oligopoly lies in middle of the two. The firms in each market structure face different kind of demand curves. The classification of market structure include the number of firms in the industry, nature of products that is homogeneous or heterogeneous, entry conditions of new firms in the industry and market power of the firm. The four types of market structure are reported in table 1. Firms in perfect competition and monopoly are at extremes and opposite end of market structure. Each form of market category can be explained here. The first one is perfect competition. A perfectly competitive market is a hypothetical market. Neoclassical economists advocate that perfect competition produces the best possible outcomes for consumers. In perfectly competitive market, there are many sellers producing such a low percentage of market output that each one cannot influence the prevailing market price. There are many buyers and none has any control over the market price. There is freedom of entry and exit of firms. Products are homogeneous and perfect substitute to each other so that each firm is a price taker and have perfectly elastic demand curve for their product. Consumers have all knowledge of prices and products available in the market. Likewise, sellers have perfect knowledge about their competitors. Factors of production such as land, labor and capital can be switched in response to changing market conditions, prices and incentives. Finally, there are no externalities arising from production and or consumption. This is a market situation that doesn't exist in real world in which a number of conditions are met as mentioned above. The example of market close to such a market may be an Indian fish market, 
lots of sellers at the fish market gather together to try to sell the same kind of goods and lots of consumers try to buy them with a prior knowledge regarding price, quality and quantity of fish. There is a free entry to and exit from this kind of fish market. The second type of competition is imperfect competition. Imperfect competition is a market structure in which there exists some amount of imperfection. Almost all markets in real world are imperfect as in practice. They all have some form of imperfection. In case of imperfect competition, the equilibrium price and output can be influenced by the firm. An imperfectly competitive firm would like to sell more at the going price. Faces a downward sloping demand curve and price of its product depends on quantity of goods produced and sold. Broadly, imperfect competition is divided into monopoly monopolistic competition and oligopoly which can be discussed here. The first one is monopoly. In monopoly, a single firm acts as a price setter and seller. Monopoly firms are called price setters because they select their own price and supply the entire quantity demanded in the market. The monopolist have an effective control over the market due to unavailability of close substitutes for the monopoly product. The example of monopoly in India is reported in table 2. The second type of imperfectly competitive market structure is monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a blending of both monopoly and perfect competition. Thus, Monopolistic competition is a form of market structure in which a large number of firms are supplying homogeneous but slightly differentiated product. The products of the competing firms are close but not perfect substitutes because for buyers they are not identical as they are slightly differentiated. This is a kind of market structure where there is competition among a large number of monopolists and therefore is known to economists as monopolistic competition. In this market, lots of sellers are selling similar products and don't differ in terms of their price and quantity. The Indian banking system is a good example of monopolistic competition. The banking system in India has been becoming much more competitive with large number of banks offering similar products services at the competing prices. The third type of imperfectly competitive market structure is oligopoly. An oligopoly is an industry with a few producers, each recognizing that its own price depends both on its own actions and those of its rivals. The essence of an oligopolistic industry is the need for each firm to consider how its own actions affect the decisions of its relatively few competitors. Thus, oligopoly is a situation where there are only a few sellers who control and sell a particular product. They influence prices and affect the competition as their numbers is few. For example, mobile telephonic service provider in India with Airtel, Tata Docomo, BSNL, MTNL, Reliance and Vodafone etc. In order to understand the characteristics and boundaries, we need to know positioning of the firms. In the subsequent section, we will discuss the details regarding the positioning of the firms. The positioning of firms, firms have its own positioning to compete within the industry. Firms have two kinds of positioning the strategic positioning and the product positioning. Strategic positioning of a firm demarcates its boundaries in terms of vertical and horizontal boundaries. A firm's product positioning demarcates the characteristics that its product will offer. Depending upon the type of firm existing or new entrant, the type of product existing or new product Priority of study is given to type of positioning, strategic or product positioning. 
the priority of study for type of positioning is reported in table 3. Strategic positioning. The boundaries of firms depend upon capacity of the firms to create value within a positioning. Boundaries help the firm to define its competitors. Firms try to function within the boundaries. However, boundaries are not barriers and do not prevent entry or mergers and acquisitions. Strategic positioning of a firm demarcates its boundaries as vertical boundaries and the horizontal boundaries. The horizontal boundaries. Horizontal boundaries of a firm are demarcated by its direct competitors. Direct competitors are the firms who produce similar kind of product. Horizontal boundaries are determined by two ways. Number one, the industry and its product need to be defined clearly. Number two, the number, identity and market shares of each firm in the industry need to be determined. In order to identify horizontal boundaries, one can prepare a list of competitors in the industry. Horizontal boundaries may change over time. So the temporal change of horizontal boundaries depends upon entry and exit of competing firms. Secondly, mergers of the firms in the industry. If some firms exist, the industry or if the firms merge, then horizontal boundaries widen or expand. The expansion of horizontal boundaries leads to increase in industry concentration resulting in higher profits. Similarly, if more firms enter into the industry, then there will be a narrowing of horizontal boundaries. Then industry concentration will decline leading to lower profit. Therefore, all the existing firms in an industry try to keep horizontal boundaries as wide as possible through barriers to entry. The second one is vertical boundaries. The vertical boundaries of a firm depend upon its relative position in the supply chain. The production of any good or service involves many activities and passes through a vertical supply chain. Production activities move from suppliers of raw inputs that is from upstream vertical boundary to manufacturers, distributors and retailers that is to downstream vertical boundary. Figure 1 shows the upstream and downstream vertical boundaries of a firm. Activities in the chain include processing and handling activities, professional support activities, while processing and handling activities are associated directly with processing and distribution of inputs and outputs. The professional support activities are directly linked with accounting and the planning process. The vertical boundaries reveal decision regarding the activities that the firm performs, the activities performed by it and the activities left to the market. Thus, a set of questions that may arise when firm attempt to define their boundary are what activities does the firm do, what do the firm leave to the market. This problem is nothing but known to economists as the make or buy problem of the firm. Then there is product positioning. As mentioned earlier, a firm's product positioning demarcates the characteristics that its product will offer. Product positioning refers to how customers think when a brand is launched in the market and also how customers think about present brands in the market. Through product positioning of a brand name, a firm tries to create a sustainable competitive advantage on product characteristics in the mind of the consumer. Firms in the imperfectly competitive market, especially in the oligopolistic market, have the option of product positioning as a strategic behavior. Now let us discuss about types of product positioning. Firms create value for the consumer by positioning the product properly. The firm that can create more value for the consumer than its next best competitor 
can earn higher profits than that competitor. For example, in imperfect market like monopoly, monopolistic competition and oligopoly, firms try to create value for the consumer by positioning their product properly. To create more value relative to its competitor, a firm can take two types of positions. These are number one, differentiation position and number two, the cost position. Differentiation position. In this case, cost remaining same, the profit for the firm relative to its competitor is higher. The firm also creates more benefit for the consumer and for the society relative to its own competitor with the help of differentiation position. The differentiation position is explained in figure 2. The figure 2 shows that the firm has created value for the consumer through differentiation positioning because the consumer surplus is higher in case of firm than its next best competitor. Cost positioning. In this case, due to cost differentiation, there is a profit differentiation for the firm. The firm earns more profit relative to its next best competitor, consumer surplus remaining constant. The firm also creates more benefit for the consumer and for the society relative to its competitor with the help of differentiation in cost positioning though consumer surplus remains same in both cases as seen in figure 3. Figure 3 states that with the cost position the firm creates the same benefit for the consumer as does its competitor but it does so at a lower cost thus the firm has created more value for the society. Then brand positioning. The firm should consider the following while trying to position a brand in the market. This is the target market and the area of differentiation. The target market. While launching a product or brand, it is important to know in which market the same is going to be launched. For the product, if the market is new, then the firm has to communicate the advantage and characteristics of the product to the new market effectively. On the other hand, if the target market already purchases brands within this industry, the firm has to communicate what is the advantage of this brand relative to others for the same market to attract customers. Otherwise, the firm will face difficulties of attracting customers to switch to this brand. The area of differentiation. The area of differentiation relates to differences in the brand relative to brand of the competitors that are important to communicate to the target market. The firm should differentiate the brand based on anyone or some combination of the four P's that is product, promotion, place and price before launching the product and it should also be communicated to the market effectively. Number one, product. The differentiation may come out from a new characteristic of the product, improvement on an existing product characteristics due to technological innovation and effective brand name a flexible customer care service, extended period of guarantees or warranties, etc. Number two, promotion. Product characteristics may be tangible or intangible. Promotion is thus needed to communicate this kind of product characteristics. Promotion creates insights about the brand in consumers' minds. Further, firms may use promotion as an entry barrier and create a strong brand image in consumers mind. Number three, place. The differentiation may come out from a new distribution channel or innovations in an existing channel. For example, internet recently has been noticed as a channel of distribution. Internet appears to be providing a more efficient way 
of managing the supply chain for B2B problem. The internet facilities to prove greater convenience, flexibility of service and variety for many products for business to consumer or B2C. Number four, price. Price differentiation is usually the last area for firm to follow. Cost positioning and cost advantage is important for a firm to be successful in price differentiation. A high price is sometime proved to be a source of differentiation. But in this case, the firm should have the product quality, brand image and perceptions to convince to the consumer that the product is worth the high price. Thus, area of differentiation in terms of four P's plays an important role in brand positioning of the product in mind of the consumers. Firm should enable to maintain this area of differentiation relative to its competitors and should get the value of this differentiation from the consumer in the form of profits so that differentiation can be converted into competitive advantage. Now let us summarize what we have learned from this module. In order to understand the theories of firms, the classification of market structure with respect to firm practices and boundaries need to be studied in depth. The behavior of the firm with regard to fixation of level of output and price depends upon the market structure in which it operates. Firms operate in a large variety of market structure. Market forces such as demand and supply in these different market structures influence the behavior of firms in different ways. Economists have categorized firms behavior that lead to the study of four types of market structure which is perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly. Understanding positioning of firm is important to know the characteristics and boundaries of firms. Firms have two kinds of positioning that is strategic positioning and product positioning. Strategic positioning of a firm demarcates its vertical boundaries and horizontal boundaries. The boundaries of firms depend upon the capacity of firms to create value within a positioning. Boundaries help the firms to define its competitors. Firms try to function within the boundaries. Horizontal boundaries of a firm are demarcated by its direct competitors. In order to identify horizontal boundaries, one can prepare a list of competitors in the industry. The vertical boundaries of a firm depend upon its relative position in the supply chain. The production of any good or service involves many activities and passes through a vertical supply chain. Production activities move from suppliers of raw inputs that is from upstream vertical boundary to manufacturers, distributors and retailers that is to downstream vertical boundary. A firm's product positioning demarcates the characteristics that its product will offer. Product positioning refers to how customers think when a brand is launched in the market and also how customers think about present brands in the market. The firm considers the target market and the area of differentiation while trying to positioning a brand in the market. While launching a product or brand, it is important to know in which market the same is going to be launched. For the product, if the market is new, then the firm has to communicate the advantage and characteristics of the product of the new market effectively. The firm should also differentiate the brand based on any one or some combination of the four P's that is product, promotion, place and price. Before launching the product, 
and it should also be communicated to the market effectively. Firms should able to maintain this area of differentiation relative to its competitors and should get the value of this differentiation from consumers in the form of profits so that differentiation can be converted into competitive advantage.